choose a quest. Well, the quest that we're on right now is the Nightmare. Don't know, actually know why it's called that. I guess we're going to find out. The last chapter didn't seem like it ended on a dramatic note. We were just exploring the Bible room, and then we finished that. It wasn't like really a big dramatic thing that happened. All right, uh, equipping books, I can equip two. Let's remember that. I still can't do any of these. I have to find all of the pieces. We can equip Discourse on the Method for Logic, Evelania Ev for Etiquette, Sophistria for Diversion, Thoughts on the French Revolution for Politics, Art for Erudition. I want to learn about uh, Sophism. Let's learn a little bit about that. Uh, logic, etiquette, politics. Let's let's learn something about the French Revolution. Let's do that. It's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. All right, meet with the other guests in the small living room. I don't suppose he has another book for me. You are expected in the small salon, sir. All right, the small salon. Well, I don't need to go there right away, as we've learned. Okay, I guess I have- I have- I'm maxed out on Devil's Thorn. How many- how many is maxed out? Three. Temporarily reveals the immunities and vulnerabilities affecting a dialogue choice. I not- I haven't actually used these. Carmelite Water, next skill use is free. And then Golden Elixir, negative alterations. And I am out of Royal Jelly. Should probably use these things more often. I've been using Royal Jelly, but that's kind of been the only one of the uh, the items I've been using. So I don't know if there's any opportunity to explore in pl in places that we're not supposed to. So Jacques Peru. No, can't get in his room. Because as we know, when it wants we when it wants us to go somewhere, we really should check out everywhere else we could check out before we do that just in case duke manuel godoy but i think everyone's i think everyone's doors are probably still locked like if something was not open previously it probably isn't open now oh, that's me can i go back in my room i cannot Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. President George Washington. When do we get to examine George's room? Learn his little secrets. So I think we did a circuit. Monsieur Johann von Wolner. Yeah, we can't get in von Wolner's room. Not going to let me upstairs yet. All right, I think we can be satisfied that we can just go downstairs. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. With a bullet, apparently. Don't send her on Mom's trail. Ask her to go beyond the nightmare. Speak about the messages. So I could use... Um, hmm. I mean... We, we want to be loyal to mother, don't we? Of course we do. If 
mother's really killed her sister, I'd better find her by myself. They say they spent a lot of time together. They got along well. Oh, really? Do you think your mother liked Duchess Hillsborough? Of course she did. After all, she's your sister. Well, we'll find them, Emily. Trust me. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. I mean, she probably would. But can we betray mother? And how accurate are our visions anyway? Hey, just so you know, I had like a hallucination where I saw my mom kill your sister. I feel like I would want to hold that to the chest before uh, I, I get before I said anything. <laughs> like, we'll keep that to my discover mind. some more proof about this. I'm cautious. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. Like, maybe later, it'll come up. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. Who is it? And who is this charming character? Man Mel Brooks? The Duke of La Alcudia. He's the head of the Spanish government, Monsieur de Richer. He's the one who, in practice, controls Spain. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention, which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if the gracious. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous, bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France. He's lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Let's see, I can use my psych powers. Think of the consequences for the order with my erudition. Uh, let's calm things down. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maurras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Man, Sarah, yeah. everyone knows my mom. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. All right, I'm just gonna take off. It's gonna leave the room. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Probably some vampire stuff. All 
Yeah, let's look at him. Favorite of King Charles IV of Spain, Godoy rapidly climbed the political ranks. Lover of Queen Marie Louise Bourbon of Parma, he attracted the envy of Spanish princes. As Secretary of State, he developed and strengthened the Spanish colonial empire, especially in the Americas. A close friend of Louis XVI, King of France, he worked hard for the king's liberation, but in vain. This served to fuel his resentment of the Republican government of France. Invited by Sir Gregory Holm, Godoy arrived at Lord Mortimer's manor with the firm intention of calming the expansionist desires of the United States of America on their continent. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Yeah, we haven't spoken to Von Volner yet. Confrontation start. I heard about your mother's disappearance. This is my only chance. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. What's he hiding? Let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? Hold on. Uh, which, let's see. I don't know anything about him. It's to be discovered. I don't know weaknesses or immunities. But well, let's see. Um, press three. This one? To hear you speak, you seem to know my mother well. Uh, not really. Uh, we met for the first time on this very spot uh, some weeks back. Uh, we had a very pleasant discussion. She's an exceptionally learned lady with a good head for business. Uh, no need for me to tell you that. I agree. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Okay, what was the weakness? Diversion. As of now, I only have this one point. I still do have more of these. No. Prompt him to talk about it? Absolutely, but I was hoping that you could tell me more about it. Well, she was planning to sell me a very old book. Ah, is he the buyer? No secret of the fact that I am passionate about the subject. And when Sarah spoke to me about it, her account literally had me enthralled. <laughs> I can think of nothing else since succeeded. I've come across some step three books in her belongings, perhaps. Make him talk about what he's looking for. As my mother's got so many old books. Uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to. Oh, it's easy. You, you can't mistake this one. It's an ancient grimoire, composed of seven parts. Each one is closed under lock and key. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. If you find it, you mustn't tamper with it, you see? That, that's unusual. Unfortunately, that doesn't ring a bell. I'll look again, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Oh yeah, we beat him up. Yeah, we, we knocked him out. I absolutely know him. Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once. Precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No. You can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? Confrontation success. We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Burchard was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al-Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. 
um, that's the King of Prussia. Well, he is... He does work for the King of Prussia, though we were told that he's the real power behind the throne. Mortimer or Holm? Um... I mean, I don't... Like, Mortimer likes to collect a whole lot of stuff. Like, we saw his collection. He has what might be Excalibur. So you'd think that Mortimer would want it himself? Uh, I guess it could be possible that Von Volner is, uh... I, oh, wait. Would, would this work here? I used another one, but no, it's not showing any vulnerabilities. Um, it could be possible that, that Mortimer wants it. Um, I don't really know much of anything about Holm, actually. We don't know any immunities or, uh, or weaknesses. He invested time in the working class, created charity schools, Mortimer's his friends. We did, he, he did mention earlier rebuilding an orphanage. I don't know, why, would he want the ancient book? He hasn't really said anything concerning his interests. We saw him playing a chess game with Mortimer. I guess really when it comes down to it, we don't know a whole lot about him. So, I mean, it could very well turn out that he's the vampire. But, like, Mortimer's actually the one... We see, we've seen his collection. And I don't know if the King of Prussia wants the book. But if if uh, von Borschert was coming here to sell the book, why why sell it to von Volner instead of just to Mortimer directly? And eh, let's say Mortimer. Lord Mortimer. Oh, you are way off the mark. There's nothing more for us to say. Goodbye. And didn't feel good about any of those choices. At least we succeeded at the conversation. I don't know if any of those choices would have been... would have led to anything. Gotta find out more clues about the Mother's Note. We got some royal jelly. That's good. Because I, I don't have any. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. Five circles. Uh, do I have that key? I actually do have it. There goes space left. I'll retrieve it later. Golden elixir, which was uh, negative alterations. Yeah, that we got infected by something once. That's the only time we had to use it. Hey, these look like Ooh. pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia. Ancient encyclopedia. Talent unlock bookworm. Oh, we've completed the encyclopedia. So next time we can read something. It can be this, and it gives us points in science, linguistics, and erudition. So, uh, it's been a, a while since that tryout, so just in case you don't remember, the beginning of the game had Louis and Mom tied up by a man named Von Borschert. Because it turned out they stole a book from him called Alizif. And he wanted to know where they hid it. And they would not tell him. And then they knocked him out. Uh, and they're trying to find out who the buyer of the book is. We now know it's Von Volner. But apparently he's doing it on behalf of someone else. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? Let's see. Coming conference. Ask him about the nightmare. What do you think, you know, it may be an odd question, but what do you think about the nightmare? Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one, given the number of books he has. You ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. What do you think about this Godoy? What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. He doesn't give a damn about his reputation, or... 
Tell me more. Like, that's questioning and diversion. Uh, let's see. Napoleon. Immunity to conviction or politics. I guess I could use another one of these. Uh, no, neither of these are a weakness. Tell me more. Meaning... This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. His undeserved titles, more than ten in just four years, and each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. What do you think about the coming conference? Would you have any more information about the conference Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? Hmm, three Frenchmen at the same table. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. Still nothing about mom. Before we leave, I guess I should just check out like, these walls here. Da -da 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 -da. No. Alright, I think we can leave the room now. Gotta find out more clues about Mom's note. Wow, oh, that could be anything. Or anywhere. You, what do you know about my mom's note? What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. I was wondering if you could help me out. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? We did have this conversation before. Any, uh, amber? My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. I like how he whispered, like his voice lowered, like he's talking about a controlled substance. Do you have any, uh, Amber? Play a trick on him. Um, but I... I do have two points now. I'll play a trick on him and steal the Amber. No point in lying, you know. I know full well you haven't got any. I would never think of lying, sir. I don't believe I am authorized to give it away. That is all. Amber? Here? I'd be surprised. Yet, I assure you, sir. No, you're pulling my leg. I don't believe you. I wouldn't dare to joke with, sir. Yeah, sure. You're just leading me on. I dare you to show it to me, if you really have some. Well, then, sir, here is a piece. Ah, oh, right. Well, I'm impressed. Can you lend it to me for a minute? Of course, sir. Here. Wow. I can hardly believe it. Well, I have other questions. Of course, sir. But, sir, I believe you haven't given me back the amber, sir. What? What amber? The piece I gave to sir. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You really ought to look after your things. And it can't be easy to come across amber in these parts. Ah, um, well, does Sir desire anything else? I'm pretty sure this is the same guy that we took the book from as well. We're not, we're not, uh, he, uh, he, he's, he's, you gotta feel sorry for him. <laughs> Do you have any, uh, Devil's Thorn or Maltese Cross? 
Ah, oh, I still haven't quite recovered after that boat crossing. Would you happen to have any Devil's Thorn by any chance? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Devil's Thorn may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. Look, if you have any, we can take it together. We can share. Okay, I don't have any more jelly, so I cannot actually do either of these. Any Carmelite water? A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. Okay, well, we can't do that either. Pardon me, sir. Sir certainly does seem to be, uh, d in, certainly seems to need quite a large assortment of drugs. I, sir, I, I'm sorry. I, I cannot give you the drugs. Lord, Lord Mortimer, certainly. Lord, Lord, Lord Mortimer, sir. Lord, Mor Lord Mortimer, Lord Mortimer, Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. He loves tasting those rooms. Oh, hey, it's George Washington. Oh, did you see that thing I did with the servant? You think that was out of line? A Chinese coin. Well, he we just got stood up bolt upright right in front of me. George, what do you think about the nightmare? Go beyond the nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No, nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. What do you think about Godoy? Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I am very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain. Ed, I could use a point on that. Um, do I really want to use a point on that? It's my only point left, and I can assume I know what the context is. He must have a good reason. I wonder what promise Lord Mortimer could have made to make him agree to come here, given the circumstances. Who knows? What about this conference? Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer, or Sir Gregory, regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving, but you'll see, everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. I know it. Oh. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. Now your mouth was doing a, a weird thing for a second, George. What's that book you're reading, by the way? Well, I can't see it from here. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the Order would have intervened. King was playing with fire. The king made things worse by himself. Don't insist. Eh, kind of hesitant to use this last point on this. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I, well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis. 
I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. Yeah, that's right. We still do have his letter. We're supposed to give it to Mom, but of course Mom has not appeared. Do you know the theme of the conference? I'm sure a man like you is in the circle of trust. Would you know what the conference that Lord Mortimer mentioned is going to be about? Not really, my son. Well, be it Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory, uh, we are never informed about the theme of the conference before it begins. Yeah, no one knows nothing. Everyone's just okay with that, I guess. Ask him about the nightmare. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Well, my mommy left a message saying, go beyond the nightmare. Okay, so I don't think I spent... I, I, I get a cost reduced by three, so I don't spend any points on this. A connection with anything here. Think of a place and tell me the first thing that comes into your Ooh, seductive. Rawr. Let me okay, what's the... What's the Vulnerability manipulation. And we've unlocked the seductive trait. Is that listed any where is where are these things listed when it says those things? Oh traits over here. Cautious theologian lawyer inebriate investigation confidant legitimate charismatic trait. He is not charismatic. Trusting occultist, reliable, immoral, member of the order determined reckless. Um, well, I mean, seductive is not, not mentioned. I feel like when these things get brought up, it should be, like, somewhere here. Mm. I'd say uh, Lord Mortimer's favorite painting on the wall behind his desk. You know, that painting caused quite a stir when it was exhibited. It is titled The Nightmare, and it shows a woman lying down with a creature sitting on her, and in the background, a horse. <laughs> I don't know if it will be of any help, but I can't think of anything else. You never know. Thank you for that, though, Your Eminence. Oh, I gotta go and see it just in case, though. Let's go see it. What do you think about Godoy? I was wondering what to think of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character, at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the church. You can believe me. Tell me about the rumors. Well, I did gain a point, so maybe we should learn about the rumors. As to his faith, I have no doubt. However, his ambition seems to surpass his morality. And I hope that it will not solely the crown. You can say that again. The blue eyes of the latest Infanta, Maria Isabel, have left everyone wondering. Rumors always accompany men of power, Your Eminence. Naturally. But the number of awards and titles granted by the Queen during these past four years leaves little doubt. So, Godoy really is this out-and-out -out rascal who uses his charm on the Queen. I guess uh, Godoy unlocked the seductive trait uh, as well. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Rui. Yep, we shan't be taking up time. All right, got to find Mortimer's office. Okay, we completed that objective. Now we go to got to go to the study. Um, where is the study? the host's office. Oh, it's... Okay, we have not been able to go up like up to the top floor before. So that's where we're heading now. I don't suppose there's any uh, jelly lying around. That's some devil's thorn.
Right, the library. Wasn't there a book that we... I, we couldn't take it out. I don't remember if we just didn't have the points to do it. Well, I don't see a highlight now. Atrus. Oh, no. No, my brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Right. And yeah, it, someone did mention that that's a missed reference. Which I, I did not catch uh, the first time. We're just sitting down. Right, here was the Medusa room. Just doing a quick check around to see if there's... Oh, give me a little reprieve. All right, some Carmelite water. Okay, golden elixir, which we are full up on. The song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. Ah, François Premier, receiving the Holy Family, a painting by Raphael. Amber. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? <laughs> the Fall of Phaeton, another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton, struck by lightning for borrowing his father's chariot and losing control of it. Moral, don't steal dad's chariot. Mm, yes, I also like how the artist made sure that the focal point of the painting is a horse's ass. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. Use the right key? I do not have the left key. Ooh, book. The locksmith's art. At subterfuges. We could go upstairs. Don't need any golden elixir at the moment. Great, honey. Oh, good, finally. We found some jelly. Oh, I, I, okay, I can go up these stairs. So we did a circuit of the of this floor before before we went downstairs. Uh, so I think now we're finally ready to go upstairs from here, which we have not been able to do before. So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? Mm-hmm. It's a little dangerous. I guess uh, Lord Mortimer likes things to be you know very picturesque. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Arzin, change first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter. To B, E, or A. Ab. You could change this to C, Z, or E. Eb. Well, the second letter, the, there are two vowel options. What's the fourth letter? No, it's not easy, I guess. Ease? Apparently it is not that. Uh, let's see. Yai? Yo? So the th of the, for the third letter, three of the options are vowels. 
Z is an odd choice for the first letter. Cain, you know, could be a biblical reference. But still, Z, it stands out a little bit, right, for a first letter. If a Z was the first letter, the second letter would have to be a vowel. And then the third, if the fourth letter is a consonant, the third letter, I think, has to be a vowel. Oh, okay. Zeus, all right. And we got some amber. Oh, we got some handwritten notes by Lord Mortimer. Is this in here? William Alexander Mortimer. Okay, we have three out of five on thoughts of men and society. I mean, I, I guess the idea is that Mortimer is interested in, you know, stories about gods and such. He has his Bible room. There's a little painting of giant naked men. Ah, uh, some things never change. It's a book on the history of the Crusades. I don't think it has any connection with my research. Wow, we had an entire animation just for that. Mm-hmm. A family ancestor, apparently. Or maybe it's just him. Wow, dog. Hmm? <whistles> oh. A minor bird. <whistles> speak to the bird. Well, do we want to speak to the bird? What if the bird repeats us? To Mortimer. Is it dangerous to talk to the bird? I can I do not have anything to feed the bird with. Maybe I can find something to feed the bird with. By the way, the thing we picked up... Leviathan. This gives us politics. Mm-hmm. Oh, take that. Do I have... Okay. I probably should examine the berries before feeding them to the bird. That's what you generally feed birds. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got a lot of useful information. I thought maybe... He, I thought maybe if I didn't do that... If, like... I thought maybe he would say, Actually, hold on. These berries are poison. Hmm. Might come in handy. Minor bird. Okay. What if we speak to him? Um. Sure. <laughs> Let's say the name of our mom. Sarah Dariche? Waldo, you know Sarah? What? Repeat that, Waldo. Sarah... What about Sarah? Good God, what's been happening here? So, th this is just a, a straight-up Twin Peaks reference. Uh, what about Lord Mortimer? Well, Waldo, is your master good? What's your boy, Waldo? What's your boy? I don't really know what I was expecting. All right, so something uh, with our mom happened here, apparently. Let's take a closer look. The dessert, the most in vogue nowadays. These chocolates are probably a protocol gift. 
Everybody in Europe loves them now. I'm gonna shove them in my pockets. The Queen of France has her own personal chocolate maker at Versailles. They say it's her guilty little morning ritual before getting dressed. A cup with one sugar and some vanilla, if I remember rightly. I would be surprised if Mortimer has them delivered straight from South America. I'm gonna shove them in my pockets, and then next time I'm in like some sort of political dinner, I'm gonna pull out at this half half melted chocolate and shove it in Napoleon's hand. Dark chocolate beans, very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society. The nightmare painted by Fusilli in 1781. Ah. This must be what my mother was talking about. Now just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey, looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. All right, well, let's look at these documents before we do that. Find the mechanism to move the painting. Accounts for the year 1792. 8,156 pound food, 6,200 pounds candles, 2,621 pounds dressed stone, 8,600 pounds Corinthian marbles, 9,227 pounds wood, 2,060 80 pounds stained glass, 280,000 pounds master paintings, 3,641 pounds fabric, 25,460 pounds of wine, 254 pounds water, 13,598 pounds powder, total 360, 437 pounds. P.S. Remember to reduce wood consumption next year. Yes, that's the problem. Of course, please someone help me budget this. My family is starving. Dear Mr. Guido Poletti, I'm writing with regard to the dates of the paintings that I sent you for your temporary exhibition. Please note they are part of my private collection and are dated according to the Freemason's calendar, AL, in use at the time. As you may well have guessed, you must remember to sub subtract 4,000 years if you want, don't want the public to be surprised at the dating of the works. No need to remind you that the Freemason year AL begins in March, not January. About the Longinus painting, I took the liberty to have the spear touched up so it better corresponds to the actual spear. I cannot urge you strongly enough to do the same for yours. Yours sincerely, Lord William Alexander Mortimer, Marquis of Westfordshire. Edited the painting? I don't like what that spear looks like. I'm going to paint over it to make it look cooler. That's how, that's how you do it with art. Aha, I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great, that's all I needed. I'm glad we're so confident that Lord Mortimer isn't going to be walking in anytime soon. Now, now what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model, a model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. It's comical because we have a bigger lock over here. Numbers. Okay. So, do we know the year of the nightmare? when that was painted. Painted. <whistles> Says the current year is 1792. Oh, we got some more royal jelly. Now we can look at all some, some this one over here. Painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. 
let's situate the scene. The siege of Saint Jean d'Acre was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Move away. Waldo, do you know when the nightmare was painted? A minor bird. <laughs> it is here. Tell me the door code. Here I am talking to a bird. Shame on me. Well, maybe I need to give him another another cherry. I cannot. Maybe do I still have any on me? A minor bird. No, I'm not gonna give him the chocolate. I don't suppose this book over here is more relevant to us now. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Salle. Hey, the dates indicate AL and it looks like 4,000 years have been added to our calendar. All oh, that counting system again. Okay. Link the author to the dates. The author is Pierre Amédée de la Salle. None other than the Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge of Paris. Now I understand why the dates are offset. He's using dates based on the Analusis, year zero of the Masonic calendar, by adding 4,000 years to the Gregorian calendar. But I thought that that calendar starts in March. Well, we already knew that. We saw it on the, on the note. I do not have... Oh, wait, I, I have a royal jelly. Okay. Oh, it's I, my, my logic level is only one, so it's like adding an additional point needed to do this. But fortunately, I do have two points. The Crusades took place not long after the year 1000. Here, all the dates say 5000 and something. I'm guessing this dating system begins 4000 years before the calendar that we use. Yet, I'm getting the feeling that there's something else, another small detail. But, but what is it? All right, let's let's learn about some crusades. The famous call of Pope Urban II. 20 years after the capture of Jerusalem from the Arabs by the Turks, Urban II convened the council. He promises a plenary indulgence to Christians who go and get Jerusalem back from the Turks. The result, the Jewish community on the road to Jerusalem found itself persecuted for no reason. 12,000 Jews would perish, not to mention the massacre of Ma'ara where acts of cannibalism by Frankish crusaders were reported, or even the capture of Jerusalem, where approximately 30,000 were left dead. It signaled the beginning of centuries of wars of religion. Ah, that plenary indulgence. Gotta love it. Look, I kind of have... I kind of have this note here from God that says that I'm good. Like, you know, anything that I do, it's fine. I got the, I got the note. So, so hey... I'm good. Uh, Second Crusade. Or how Louis VII, King of France, eager to be pardoned for the death of thousands of innocent people in the fire of the Church of Vitry, convinces the Pope to authorize him to lead his own crusade. The result? In Germany, a new outburst of violence against the Jewish community. And a monumental fiasco by poor Louis VII, cuckolded by his wife's uncle. Uh, that's an important detail. Third Crusade. The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionheart distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. All right, we got some year, some specific years right there. We got 5187 and 5190. And they, they've mentioned to us. Like in a few in a couple places now, they mentioned the thing to us about subtract four thousand years. Uh, 
So let's try the dates we just saw. No, not that. No, not that. This. So there would be... If we subtract... Eh, sub subtract... So it would be one... One, one. Eight. Seven. Can I... Oh. Well, I do not... I cannot... My vigil, I do not have points to, to notice anything. I cannot... <laughs> I, he just can't notice something. I cannot notice this. Lower the lever. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. All right, so another date we got was, let's see, nine. And then, oh. I mean, I know I, know I don't have the points to do it, but I just think it's funny the way it's saying, ah, I just, I can't, I can't watch these and notice anything. I just can't. Doesn't work, damn it. No. I really it's... thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. All right, so he's actually saying that. So there's something about the year 1190. And he's saying, well, I subtracted it. What if we don't subtract it? Maybe uh, Mortimer, maybe Mortimer observes the, uh, <laughs> the Masonic calendar. Damn it. Doesn't work. 5,190. I was pretty sure it was right. Maybe I didn't use the right dating system. Okay, so he's he's pointing out, hey, the maybe the dating system, I need to use a different one. So four thousand years, and okay, and the other thing they mention is that it begins in March. All right, so March instead of January. Let's go take a look at that five one nine zero year again. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de La Salle. Hey, the dates indicate AL, and it looks like. 4,000 years have been added to our calendar. All oh, that counting system again. I feel like we did not need to spend these points. I feel like that was... that the, What we learned from these two, we already learned from the note, which was free. The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade... Twelfth month, okay. ...was broken in the twelfth month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on... So in there, they're specifying that we're at... This is specifying the month of 5-1... The twelfth month of 5190. They're not saying the name of the month, they're saying the twelfth month. And so we are offset by a few months. I wonder what he would have noticed about these rollers. <sighs> Still not working. Still not working. I get the impression I counted the wrong way. It must be one year more then, right? There we go. Open sesame. <laughs> He's very proud of himself. I'm sure we can open that again. No problem. Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. Well, he's been hiding a giant globe. Can we spin it? I feel like it's a waste if we can't spin it. Oh. 
Dear Lord Mortimer, I'm writing you to, ask, to persuade President Washington to not sign the Fugitive Slave Act as it stands. We must absolutely legislate on a national level and not allow every state to choose their policy regarding slaves. It was initially intended to resolve a conflict between Pennsylvania and Virginia. By signing it, we risk legislating the hunting of blacks. More and more men of little faith are becoming slave hunters, and unable to find any slaves on the run, they kidnap the first black they come across, which they pass off as the wanted runaway. The situation threatens to quickly degenerate. Thank you in advance, your friend John Adams. P.S. Say hello to my daughter Elizabeth for me. I hope she's doing well. All right, so Lord Mortimer has such, uh, such stroke, such power, such juice that apparently the vice president is saying, Hey, could you tell the president, dear Mortimer, please tell George not, not to sign this. I'm trying to tell him he's not listening to me. Maybe you can talk to him. We can analyze the geopolitical situation with my politics. Moreover, it shows a fair number of sea voyages being organized towards the American continent. <sighs> no doubt with slaves. How many men are broken in this trade? Tens of thousands each year, according to what people say. It's a map of Africa. It shows the forces present in Africa. This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns, even for Mortimer. Oh, did I click on something else? Okay, I, I re-clicked on it after clicking moving away. My lord, I hope this letter will reach you. My hours are numbered. My printing house has been confiscated. I am imprisoned in the fortress of Schlisselburg. If by chance you could intervene in my favor, I would be eternally in your debt. The Tsarina Catherine should not be long in banning all Golden Order lodges from her territory. Our horizon has become considerably darker. In the hope that you can help me, your friend, Nikolay Nozikov. Oh no, the Golden Order? being forbidden from Russia. Well, this cannot stand. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Guillaume Trimor. Shepherd. Hmm. He says, it is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in and goes on. There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. The author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? Yes, but unfortunately for the author, it would be a few hundred years before cable news came into existence. Boom! Timely humor! A knock on cable news. I'm on top of things. The gift has been delivered. Timur Shah Durrani, King of Afghanistan, of Punjab, of Sindh, of Mahad, and of Kashmir, should not retain his title much longer. His son Zaman will succeed him as planned. We will then be able to resume negotiations. K. Okay. okay, so Lord Mortimer is at the core of all kinds of politicking happening in the world. Why is this man so important? Uh, I do not have enough politics to analyze the geopolitical situation in the Americas. This shows the forces present in America. Yep, that's all we can tell. It just, my politics are not high enough. They were high enough for Africa. My dear friend, with thanks for your services rendered in the help of, in the fight against the Spanish and the conquest of Warren, a ship bound for Marseille in France has been chartered. Hidden aboard are a few corpses infected with the plague that are decimating our country at this moment in time. Be very careful when handling these boxes because if inadvertently opened, you risk spreading the disease all over France. Mohammed El Kaber. The plague, you say? My dear friend, as desired, I've been able to gather together my friends to sign the agreement you proposed. This agreement shall be known as the Buttonward, Buttonwood Agreement. If you recall the place where we gathered when you met us for the first time, you will understand why this name was given. 
Please find and close the list of my colleagues, Leonard Bleeker, 16 Wall Street, Hugh Smith, Tontine Coffee House, Armstrong and Barnwall, 58 Broad Street, Samuel March, 243 Queen Street, and Andrew D. Barclay, 136 Pearl Street, Benjamin Sixus, 8 Hanover Square, John Henry, 13 Duke Street, John Bush, 195 Water Street, David Reedy, 58 Wall Street. Thanks to your help, we shall soon be able to meet at my place, the Tontine Coffee House. I look forward to seeing you as soon as possible. Hugh Smith. Well, that sounds like a fun group, meeting at the coffee house. My dear friend, thank you for your words, and I do understand your situation. I regret having to confront you militarily, but if the situation obliges me to declare war, then do what you think fit. Under your advisement with a weary heart, I am off to meet up with the coalition that opposes you. In the hope of serving you again, George, King of Hanover, Hanover, King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Oh, shucks, my friend. I would hate if I had to declare war on you. But, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. I cannot analyze the geopolitical situation of Europe. Well, actually, I do have one royal jelly, don't I? Okay, now we can do it. it. Looks like a campaign is being prepared in France in favor of Italy. Could Mortimer have decided to finance a war? It's a map of Europe. It shows the forces present in Europe. It's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants. Mm-hmm. Interested in the population of France, you say? William, whatever your projects, it would seem that our father is against leaving you with a grip on Europe. Russia will soon commit itself to the coalition against your dear France. I don't think you can resist for long. I beseech you, William, not to persist. You are tearing our family apart. Your loving brother... G. P.S. I shall come to your conference, but do you think that holding at the present moment is conductive? Oh, there's a, an entire Mortimer family. There, are, are they all playing their political games? My dearest Lord Mortimer, as a friend of China, rest assured that you will be rewarded for your information. You need not worry about any scheming against us from Great Britain. The representative, Mr. McCartney, will leave without any hope of any arrangements involving us. Your friend, Kang Long, Emperor of the Qing Dynasty. So is there, Locked. is there more than one Mortimer? Are they all working against each other? Got some Devil's Thorn. Sir, your plans to intervene in Belgium are to go ahead as set down. I am to occupy the Prussian army. Your delivery of cannons to Valmy has ensured our victory. As agreed, I have notified the King of Prussia of the invasion plans of Custine and the Army of the North. I will keep the Austrians out of Belgium. I am to quickly return to Paris as I sense the fate of our King Louis is about to be decided dishonorably, and it is impossible for me not to intervene. Should you have any missives to give to me, I invite you to go by, as per usual, our friend, Monsieur Peru. Sincerely yours, Charles Francois de Marie, General of the Army of the North. It's a map of Asia. A fine looking map of the Orient, indeed. It looks like I don't even have the option to use my politics to analyze it. I guess we just don't know much about the region. My dearest Lord Mortimer, I regret to inform you inform you that it will soon be impossible to ignore pressure from the Russians. The Tsarina Catherine has every intention of supporting the Count of Provence and will recognize him as the regent of the Kingdom of France. Once King Louis has disappeared from the political stage, I'm sorry to announce bad news, but expect dark times ahead. Your friend, Elfried Bauer. All right, so that's the perimeter of the room. I wonder what he does with this... Oh, there we go. I was about to say, does he do anything with this giant globe? He sticks, like, a note in, into it with a sword. That's what he does. Let's see if you have the courage to face me alone. This is my mother's writing. I've picked up her trail. Mommy! What is she up to? Obviously, she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but... But where? 
clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I have absolutely got to find out where it came from. I'm gonna take that, stick it in my pocket. Alright, Mom throwing down the gauntlet to Mortimer. Let's see if you got what it takes to, to take me on. One on one. Learning about some eyeballs here. Preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Got a book. What is that going to teach us? Science. We love science. Something strange about this table. Look at the instruments. The little surgeon's perfect collection. We could examine. I mean, if you're saying this is for, like, brain surgery, I think we probably figured that out. Oh, we discovered an immunity for Lord Mortimer. Conviction and science. <laughs> He's immune to science. A skeleton by the name of Gustav. If the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by, Mortimer's given a name to his anatomy skeleton. <laughs> That's morbid. Uh, dear Lord Mortimer, as agreed, I've changed your old lock for one of my invention. Drawing inspiration from your doctor friend, Mr. Guillotin. Here's a model of your new lock, if, if you appreciate my prototype. It is difficult to imagine how it all fits together, but will be located in the middle of the present door. The aim being to alter nothing of the door's functionality, but to add a bit of spice. Depending on the lineup of the wheels, the aforementioned lock will open or will punish the snooper, whose faith is not strong enough. I call my invention the Judgment of Faith, because if a snooper is unable to resist opening it, they will be punished. It. They will be punished. Okay, so where did he put it? Um, the middle of the present door. Well, I mean, okay, so there was a, a a door with bars in front of it in the previous room. Maybe we might want to be careful. These are feathers. Pigeon, probably. Oh, we can uh, examine the ins inscriptions at no cost. But let's examine the material first. Looks like obsidian or onyx. Must weigh a ton. And the inscriptions? Strange. I don't recognize the alphabet. I wonder where the pictograms are from. It isn't Egyptian or Hebrew. There are two inscriptions on the sides as well as on the top. No way to know what's underneath. Absolutely no idea what it's for, but I find this cube fascinating. I find myself obsessed with the cube. Can't stop staring at the cube. When I'm not looking at the cube, I'm asking myself, why am I not looking at the cube? My dear friend, who is the most admirable of all of the Olympians? Not, none other than the king of the gods, of course. Unlike his father Kronos, he learned to make equal use of his strength and vision. Instead of fearing the power of his children and brothers, he accepted to share the world with them. Men fear his thunder and praise his justice. He reigns, but doesn't dominate. And maybe that's the clue to the, to the box that we opened in a previous room. Hmm. That must be for writing the homing pigeon messages. All right. Do not need any more Carmelite water. My dear Lord Mortimer, be assured of my entire devotion. As agreed, the Vendi peasantry will soon rise up. My network is striving to increase the pressure on the masses. The decision of the assembly, which consists of voting the civil constitution of the clergy, is inflaming the region. The people overwhelmingly reject the priests and swear loyalty to the state. If you could ensure that the convention will administer the final blow to the people, the issue will be resolved. Without wishing to direct you, a forced recruitment for a faraway conflict would be a perfect way to arouse the people def definitively. Your devoted servant, Francois Athanas Charret de la Contre. A lot of arousing and inflaming of regions. Am I seeing things, or is that an actual von Leeuwenhoek microscope? Incredible. Mortimer really is at the cutting edge of science. Well, he is immune to science. It took us ages to get one of those. Oh, another immunity? 
No, it was not science immunity. We still we knew that. Full key with an occult fire symbol. A chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. We do not have a second key. Oh, but we got royal jelly. If we wanted to use these points. A chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. Key with an occult water symbol. Also collector coins. We love them coins. My dearest friend, our plans are going ahead wonderfully well. The Coinage Act has been voted. Your project of founding the very first Bank of America should not be delayed and will probably be called Union Bank. As for the construction of the White House, it is still die to due to begin in October. I will accept no delays. You can trust me on this. I hope to see you soon. Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of State. How many coins did I get from that box? A few, apparently. More? How many times is that going to come up? Okay, it's done now. Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. Some goat skulls, chicken legs... Now we all know what that's for. I'm a little surprised that- Look, a pack of tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? <laughs> that would surprise me. Sure. Let's read it. It is a typical draw on a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance. That announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the Emperor evokes a future full of power and stability. Yeah, probably should use the Emperor. That'll spawn two more tarot cards. And hopefully one of those will give us some planets so we can increase the level of our hands. Most likely, Flush would be the most useful one. Lord Mortimer. The tiger is dying. On your demand, I have attacked Travancore and personally cut the throats of as many Englishmen as possible, though without help from the French. I cannot hold them, hold them off much longer. My forces are rapidly diminishing in spite of your new rockets. Help us, Tipu Sahib, Sultan of Mysore. Probably not pronounced Mysore. And I think that we saw it. Yeah, we saw this. Uh, oh, no, we didn't see this up here. A table of alchemical elements. So, Lord Mortimer also studies alchemy? It seems like he's interested in everything. Yeah. He's a Mortimer of all trades. There's nothing he doesn't know. How can we possibly find any vulnerabilities in this man? An iron mask. I wonder who it's for. All right, I think we've seen all of the points. Pretty sure. And we can't go through this. It's locked. Even if we could, there was a note implying that maybe there's like a guillotine trap in a door. Oh, shit. How am I going to get out of here now? <laughs> oh, Louie. You've really stuffed in it this time. Oh, we can just do the thing again? I mean, would it just be the same date? Or would it be a different date on, uh, on this side? I mean, you'd expect it would be the same combination. Actually, uh... I guess now we're seeing them upside down. 
would I have to put it in backwards, if that's the case? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Examine the lever. It looks like the same as the one on the other side. Think about Well, I cannot think about the mechanism, the lock, or the shape of the cylinders. I cannot think about anything. All right. So... Like, we're not get, like, the, we're seeing the numbers upside down. So, like, you're supposed to be seeing them on the other side. Um. So, putting the, it, it, putting it in like this would probably not be right. If we were reading it from this side, it would look like 1161. Even though I know that's a 9 and not a 6. But from this side, it does look like it. Um, so let's see. If we were going to try to make it so on the other side this would be the first number so i guess we would want one to be on the other side so let's see um so so it's 10 spaces on the roller Right, so we would want it to be what? One, two, three, four, five. So that should be one on the other side. Here's one. So it was one, one, nine, one. One, two, three, four, five. Right, because the first time I did it, I said 1189, and that was wrong. And then I said 1191, and then that was the right one. So the third number is going to be 9. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so we should, then from here, we should do one, two, three, four, five. And hopefully I'm thinking of this correctly. Because I'm assuming this is the guillotine one. If you get it wrong from the inside. I'm assuming that because they give you so many options here to examine the door. The mechanism is the one on the other side. And I can't actually, you know, I <laughs> can't actually do any of these. <laughs> I'm assuming this is the guillotine one. Uh, so let's lower the lever. Okay, there we- yes, okay. Well, you better not dwell on it then. On what? Dwell on what? Mom? Master of escape. So when it says these things, oh, there it is. Okay, so it, it, it is it is listed there, gaining one point. Okay, so what would happen if we didn't do if we didn't solve that? I mean, we wouldn't have died. Like, can can he die this early in the game? I guess. I know people have said that different outcomes can happen based on your choices. I don't know if death is possible this early on. All right. Well, we now we know the next thing we need to do is we need to go outside. We've not been able to- okay. Done. So I met Manuel Godoy, got information out of Von Volner, found the nightmare that Mother mentioned, got to know Waldo, found a way of getting into secret study, got out of the study without any trouble, zero failures, alternate paths, I could have met Peru under strange circumstances. Don't know what circumstances those would be. I wonder if we met Peru under those strange circumstances, would he have hit us in the face again? Because I'm hoping that I hope I'm hoping that Louis can get more injured. His facial injuries have not healed yet, so I'm hoping that he can get more permanent injuries. Here's hoping. There's plenty of the game left. Uh, but now we have completed episode two. Uh, well, not episode two. In episode two. Number six, The Nightmare.
with no failures. Wonderful. Um, okay. So we'll, we're continuing on with the council. Mom apparently wants to challenge Mortimer to a duel. And now we have to go find the statue that apparently she just wrenched a sword out of the hands of to go stab the giant globe. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll find Mom along the way, and maybe we'll find Elizabeth along the way as well. We haven't- she has not turned up since our weird late-night conversation with her. We will continue on. Well, actually, I guess we can- we can- we can just do some, uh, some points distribution, I think. Okay, we're on level eight. Yeah, we can do some points distribution. I have four points. Let's see. Are there any level zeros? That agility is zero. Yeah, that's right. Didn't isn't the reason isn't the reason we got hit by Peru is because our agility is low? I feel like something like that came up. Okay. We need level one of agility. There we go. <laughs> our agility's so bad. Um Psychology? Questioning? Vigilance? I feel like vigilance has come up more than once. Um, well, I would have to put... Is there anything I'm closer to leveling up to? Subterfuges. I need to... I can put two points in that to level it up. Um, yeah. Level two in subterfuges. So, put one point in something else. Psychology is getting there. So is diversion. Um, yeah, let's put it into psychology. We completed the sixth quest. Let's see. Manuscripts to equip. There's thoughts on our... Oh, yeah, this one. The, we completed the encyclopedia. Obviously, we want to read... We want to read the encyclopedia. Uh, let's see. There's uh, science, logic, etiquette, subterfuges, politics. Yeah, let's become... Let's get political. Art. Er, like, erudition. Let's get erudite. I like that. Uh, and with that... That's probably a good point to say goodnight for right now. As we continue on into the next part of the council, okay, we snuck into Mortimer's secret, uh, his most private place, and fingered our way around in there. Fortunately, Mortimer did not come back while we were doing that. We learned about all kinds of information about how he has fingers in pies all over the world making things happen. Um, he's a much more important person than we thought. Uh, I do like the I do like the note there by John Adams saying, Mortimer, please, can you talk to George? George is not listening to me about the slave thing. Please just can you tell him about the slave thing? He'll do it. He'll do it if you tell him. Mortimer, very important. Also learning that there is a, a sibling to Mortimer and a father to Mortimer, and they're they're all they're all really important and influential in the world. Um We met the bird, the minor bird. We fed the minor bird. We did not feed the minor bird chocolate. I assume that would have been bad for the bird. And we were able to get out of the secret hole without getting guillotined, uh, which I don't know if that's what would have happened if we failed. I don't know. Possible. Possible. We're going to continue on with the council. Um, as we have to we have to find a way to get outside. We have not been able to get outside yet, but we have to do that now so we can find the statue that the sword came from as we continue on. <laughs>